Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time it is when you watch this, I'm delighted to be with you. I'm Yvonne Miller, Professor of Design Psychology from Queensland University of Technology in Brisbane, Australia, and I'm joined by my colleagues, Dr. Lindsay osborne Burden and Jane Carthy, to talk about some of the research we're doing at the moment about redesigning hospitals for the future. So our project, From Admission to Discharge, Designing Biophilic, Salutogenic, Eudaimonic Hospital Spaces in a Post-Pandemic post -pandemic World. Just a brief definition, biophilic, of course, is about nature, salutogenic is about health promoting, and eudaimonic is about designing spaces that promote happiness. I'd like to acknowledge the Turrbal and Yagra as the First Nation owners of the lands where QUT now stands and pay my respect to the elders, laws, customs and creation spirits. I recognise that these lands have always been places of teaching, research and learning and that these lands were never ceded. I also acknowledge the important role Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people play within the QUT community. So today we'd like to talk about HEAL, the Healthcare Excellence Accelerator Lab. And this is a partnership that just kicked off only two weeks ago between us at the QT Design Lab and Clinical Excellence Queensland, part of Queensland Health. And the focus of this partnership is really just to re-envision and redesign healthcare. As I said, it's a partnership between healthcare and the design community. And the project is designed to be a bridge, a bridge between the QT design and innovation community and Queensland Health to accelerate healthcare improvement across the state. We'll connect healthcare practitioners uh, with designers to work together and use design approaches to transform thinking, spaces, places, processes and products, and positively transform healthcare. It builds on a long-standing partnership that we've had with Queensland Health, particularly Clinical Excellence Queensland, and that was cemented last year. We had a week of activities as part of QUT Design uh, Week, you, and we came together and collaborated and brainstormed and talked about uh, yeah, what our yeah. ideal vision was, and we held a number of design thinking workshops around an array of projects. So just briefly, a little bit about the QUT Design Lab. We're a research centre uh, that's focused on change by design basically and we've got three key programs designing for health designing future technologies and designing creative and resilient communities and we see this partnership between designers and healthy healthcare community as a catalyst for really changing how we deliver healthcare. and we intend to use design to intentionally kind of challenge and provoke and to rethink how things are traditionally done and to stretch those boundaries and work together to tackle those wicked problems in healthcare. Now, as I said, we're just kicking off uh, and today we're gonna to talk about one of the projects, entrances and exits, which my colleagues will talk about, but a few other things we're doing include co-designing virtual health consultations, uh, developing child-friendly personal protective equipment, looking at new ways to assess pain, resources for cultural safety, uh, wayfounding and placemaking and making that an enjoyable experience for children and of course using VR and AR, so virtual reality and augmented reality uh, to enhance you know, what's the experience of being in a hospital over an extended period of time for children in particular. If you want to know more, please connect with us. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at QT Design on my own personal Twitter as Adivon PhD and just uh, watch the space basically. We've got a number of different projects that we would be delighted to talk about. But the first one is about entrances and exits, and Lindsay will take on from here. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Lindy Osborne Burton, and I'm both an architect and an academic at Queensland University of Technology. The next part of the presentation, I'm gonna provide you with some context around how we have developed our research project with the Sunshine Coast University Hospital. In 1933, the Finnish architect Hugo Elvar Hendrik Elto and his wife, Aino, completed the Pena Sanatorium. This was a facility which was used for the treatment of tuberculosis and was situated in the southwest of Finland. The building, as you can see, is rigidly geometric. It has long walls of expansive windows which wrap around its facades and light colored rooms and wide roof terraces with railings which, which are reminiscent of the ones that you see on cruise ships. All hallmarks of what we now know as modernist architecture, which emerged in the 20s from the work of the Bauhaus in Germany and Le Corbusier in France. 
Now, if you fast forward nearly 15,000 kilometers and over 80 years, you'll see that very little has really changed in healthcare design when you see those images of the Kenya Sanatorium compared with more contemporary photos of the Sunshine Coast University Hospital, which was completed in 2016 in um, the Sunshine Coast of Queensland, Australia. As we are all obviously painfully aware, 2020 has seen the introduction of the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic, which has fundamentally changed the way we live and we work. However, we must ask the question that what does this mean for the future of healthcare design if we are to learn to live with or perhaps even eliminate pandemics such as this coronavirus? The image that I'm showing you now are the sorts of images that we're, the media is constantly throwing at us. And we've been told that we need to, in our workplaces at least, shield ourselves from each other by wrapping ourselves in glass or perspex screens. In urban environments, we're being told that we need to maintain safe distances between each other and preferably actually spend time with each other in outdoor environments which are deemed to be safer than the in interior environments. So we think that perhaps we can do better. We can learn from the lessons of the past. We can learn from the architectures and approaches of healthcare architecture in the past, past and think about how we can design a more integrated approach to healthcare architecture moving forward, particularly in the face of um, the coronavirus pandemic. Our proposal is for an integrated approach to healthcare architecture, which includes three main components. So first is biophilic architecture. So biophilic health architecture purposely engages with and integrates nature to help promote physical healing and to improve mental health. The second component of our integrated approach to healthcare architecture is solutogenic design. And salutogenic health architecture actively facilitates improved health and well-being rather than merely providing environments where illness can be treated. And the third component of our integrated approach to healthcare architecture is eudaimonic design. Eudaimonic health architecture inspires happiness and a deep contentment with oneself and one's life. And so bringing the three together, our integrated approach to healthcare architecture combines biophilic, salutogenic, and eudaimonic approaches. The graphic I'm showing you at the moment highlights nature's dialogue through layers of building envelope, multiple spaces, anatomical, sensory, and physiological body filters, ultimately having emotional, psychological, and physical impact. This next graphic shows us that sustainable practices do no harm, while restorative practices can heal some of the harm that has already been done. So we argue that regenerative design creates a cascading series of benefits instead of externalized harm. I'm going to be concluding my part of the presentation by showing you some examples of contemporary architecture um, in Australia, um, starting with the translational Research Institute, which is located on the Princess Alexander Hospital campus um, here in Brisbane, Australia, in Queensland, um, designed by Wilson Architects and Donovan Architects in association with each other. And this building was completed in 2012. Um, just on the road in Sydney CBD, in Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, this project was completed in 2020, and it's the Darling Square, and the architects were aspect studios. The Punta Kearney Aboriginal Medical Services, otherwise known as PANS Healthcare Hub, designed by Cannot's Jung Architecture and completed in 2020, is located in Newman, which is close to the Pulba in Western Australia. Um, also designed by the same architects, Cannot's Jung, and completed in 2018, is the Panu and Ponga Aboriginal Health Clinics, also very close to the Pulpa in Western Australia. Completed by Kanyaks Jung 
architecture in 2016 is the Bariki Aboriginal Corporation Medical Centres Clinic, which is located in Perth in New South Wales, Australia. And the final image I'm going to show you is the Wollumba Elders Centre, which is an aged care facility designed by Iredale Pedersen Book Architects. And this is located in Warham, Western Australia, which is fairly close to the bundle bundles. So I'm now going to hand over to Jane Carty, who's going to give you specifics of the research design for the project that we're proposing and commencing now with the Sunshine Coast University Hospital. Over to you, Jane. I'm now going to give a quick overview of our current project. I, ha I, know, I realise that our time is short, but uh, the other thing is that we've only just started the project and uh, uh, about two weeks ago, and we're just about to start gathering data for it in the next uh, few days. Uh, the project was, uh, is about entrances and exits to hospitals and how to improve them and make them more staff and patient friendly. And um, in particular, emergency departments. Initially focused on the Sunshine Coast University Hospital in, um, in Queensland, um, but with the impact of COVID-19 and the, um, the, the, our reduced ability or we're, not, we're prevented from traveling interstate, um, we've expanded it to include more facilities across Australia and conducting more of the project online. In a way, that's been a benefit because we're going to look at more hospitals and speak to a broader selection of, uh, of clinicians and other users in hospitals. So the project is about design in healthcare context and it comes back to those aims of the uh, Design Lab and the Heal project about uh, creating spaces that are more biophilic, salutogenic and eudaimonic. And we're also looking at spaces that uh, can be uh, manipulated and played with so that they can uh, you know, address the needs um, of future pandemics or anything else that may affect the health system in the future uh, without requiring massive redesign or reconstruction. Uh, so the project is at the stage at the moment of, um, of we're in the middle of a systematic literature review. We've done our ethics and we've developed a questionnaire and we're about to start conducting interviews with healthcare staff online in emergency departments and uh, similar places in hospitals. We're going to ask uh, the staff to take for an evaluation of those hospitals, but we're trying to get examples of things that frustrate staff on a daily basis and that could be better designed and so support them to do their jobs better. Uh, as I said, uh, the interviews will be online. We were going to do them face to face and do uh, visits to various hospitals around the country, um, in Queensland in particular, but we obviously can't do that anymore. So we're just, we're going to have to do this more remotely. The whole point of the exercise is to generate ideas for improving the design of entry and exit areas. They could be small things or they could be bigger things, but they'll all be practical things that could be tried out. And they will reflect some of the issues that are already arising from the responses to COVID-19, in particular, the need to have larger waiting rooms or to segregate waiting rooms or to bypass waiting rooms altogether direct to isolation facilities. The whole point being that we want to do all of those things to keep people safe and ideally COVID free or safe from catching it from other people who are already infectious without also compromising the, uh, the feel of the environment and keeping it patient friendly and supportive of staff. And part of that is around access to nature and the uh, aspects of healing environments where we uh, support people in their journey um, because it, it's a very fr frightening time and people feel very tense and afraid of uh, the, the, what's happening in this COVID era. So we look forward to uh, sharing our results with you in the future. And we ask you to uh, stay in touch with us. Um, here are our contact details, our names and contact details, and uh, the link to the, the design lab at QUT. We're also really interested in discussing anything with you that you may be doing in a similar vein so that we can share uh, our results across uh, countries and internationally. And I thank you all for inviting us to speak today. And I hope that uh, this brief introduction has given you an idea of where we're heading. And I really look forward to, to sharing with you in the future where we've got to, especially useful things that we've all learnt. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.